Hey everybody, this is Josh and Carolyn with Homesteading Family and welcome to this week's episode of the Pantry Chat. It is episode number 11. Okay. And today we are going to talk about a day in the life of Homesteading Family. Oh boy, it's a busy day. <laughs> it is. We get a lot of questions about how do you get it all done specifically and chore planning. So we're just going to take you through our day yeah. and talk about some of the strategies and struggles and what works, what hasn't, all that. Yeah. Sounds good. But first, let's uh, catch up for a minute. What's going on with you? Oh you, boy, well, okay. Besides having a birthday this week. We did, I had a birthday. Thank you Happy guys birthday. so much. I got so many nice comments <laughs> and then I had such a wonderful day. Josh and the kids got all sorts of projects done around the house that I have been, well, out in the yard, out in the garden, <laughs> that I have been hoping to get done and I just wasn't able to do it myself. And so... That was a just, fam fun family day. It was it's a really, really fun day. Yeah, it's good weather and uh -huh. beautiful. And, yeah. Uh, and done. I want to share my birthday present with you guys that I have wanted for years. And uh, Josh and my mom went in and got this for me. This is, Whoa, look at this thing. Isn't this thing wild. amazing? It is wild looking. It's not all set up yet, but this is a copper Alembic still right from Portugal for making essential oils and hydrosols. So I'm really excited because I'm going to be able to use this with all of my herbs that I'm growing this year in the garden to make our own essential oils and our own Love hydrosols, it. which are yeah. very similar. They're the water component of an essential oil. So um, really, really excited about this and getting to play with this. I've wanted to do this for years. So, so. <laughs> very cool. If any of you guys have done this, put a comment below and let us know because I haven't tried this yet and I'm really excited to learn. So just a, another step in <laughs> self-sufficiency. Right. Yeah, and being able to make our own medicine. Right, all. yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. Well, <laughs> so but, okay, so we had a great day. So we had Happy a great birthday. day, we did all that, and I got a great present. And, and then, aside from that, I have just been working in the garden. Yeah. So that's been. You can see it. You've got a lot of color. I, I know. In the last I've gotten some tan. And yeah, and I got good. dirt under my fingernails that just won't come out now. It's like permanent. <laughs> <Right. laughs> so, anyways, yeah. having having fun out there. But what about good. you? What have you been up to? Yeah. Well, lots of garden, of course. Mm -hmm. You know that we're just trying to move the garden along, and and it's a first year space, so yeah. just just a lot of work. And but all the starts are up in the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, main crop starts, so that's exciting. And really, the extra focus or the intensive focus is getting ready for Molly. Molly. Now, Molly is the milk cow. <laughs> She's the new milk cow coming in. Yeah, she is. Mm -hmm. And of course, most of you guys know we're on a new place this year, and so we're having to prep. We've got a great barn, but it needs a lot of work. So we're just yeah. uh, uh, rehabbing, yeah. putting up gates, uh, fixing fences, and of course, you know, there's so much to do. We're always under the gun right now, but. Uh, I don't think that barn has seen an animal in it. In a decade or more two. than that or I don't two know, a, a long time yeah, so yeah. it's needing a lot of rehab but yeah so yeah. Get, getting that together and getting ready for molly saturday we saturday go and get her yeah. so um that has that's just been it yeah, yeah and then she's due to calve in about two or three more weeks yeah. so um getting... so she won't be in milk when we get her but she will no. be shortly after right. so we yeah. gotta get all set up yeah so we'll introduce you to her Sometime after she gets here. Soon, yeah. And uh, that's it. It is the spring rush, and we're just, we're on it. Yep, we're working Moving. away. <laughs> so, um, let's see here. Questions? Yeah, we have a All question. All right, one question, and uh, we're going to go with a gardening theme today, since uh, all, all of us are working on our gardens, getting things going. Uh -huh. And uh, Susan B. asked... I'm wondering how you are making those beds in the garden. What kind of machine are you using, or do you make the rows by hand? And of course, Susan is referring to probably one of the last videos or some of the photos where we're starting to shape up rows in the garden. Yeah, for the annual beds. And uh, that is a combination, mostly by machine, thankfully, mm -hmm. because this is um, a large garden. We've done a lot, I've done a lot by hand. And, um, but we've got this great new machine. It's called a BCS. You can look them up, uh, bcsamerica.com, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, it is a great two-wheel tractor. And so we're tilling it because the ground is compacted and um, we've just got to turn it up, loosen it up, and, and add in some compost. So, so wait, when you say a two-wheel tractor, you're not referring to a two-wheel drive tractor. You are you mean an actual two wheel tractor? It is. It is. Well, I, I want to. You, you guys, it. you guys got to check this out. This is a. I just became familiar with these. Yeah. This is a wonderful 
uh, homestead tool, you know, if, if you're not big enough for a tractor, full-size right. tractor. Or, or you're not ready to pay for one. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot less expensive, but it's a step up from just a basic rototiller mm -hmm. because it's actually like a tractor. It's two wheels. You still walk behind it, but it has interchangeable implements. Mm -hmm. so you can put a plow on it. You can put a tiller on it. You can put a harrow on it. You can put a brush hog on it. it we it, have the chipper, and we're yeah, using we've got that chipper. thing like crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. So it, it is a very, very cool machine. Again, BCS, if you look them up, bcsamerica.com, I think. But if you just Google BCS, uh, you can check out every, everything yeah, they've got. Yeah, can we got. put a link to that in the description or um, We can put a link to that in the yeah. description, yeah. Right. It, we just got the machine, so we're still testing it out. But mm -hmm. so far, it has been great. Yeah. So, uh, Susan, we're, we're, we're getting the ground turned up by machine, and then I'm actually shaping the rows by hand. Okay. And these are permanent beds. We, we will not continue to till over and over. Mm -hmm. This is just to get the soil loosened up and some amendment in it. Mm -hmm. And then we're shaping the beds by hand, and this particular machine actually has an attachment. I'm setting the bay, beds to the right size that can help us just condition the surface of the soil so we don't have to turn it over every season. Okay. And um, we'll, we'll show some of that as we go along through the garden season. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's how we're getting it done. Good. And I am really thankful for that equipment. Most years it's been by hand. Yeah, and yeah. this is one of the biggest gardens we have going yeah. uh, that we've ever done, and we're so thankful for it, and that machine is really helping us yeah, it really is. <laughs> get it done. Yeah, so um, before we get into today's topic, though, we have a question for you. Oh, yeah, we do. You want to throw that out what there? What do you guys think about us cutting out the chit-chat part at the beginning of these pantry chats? I know a lot of you guys um, don't have a lot of time. Like all of us, you are out and you're busy too. So we were wondering about cutting out the beginning and just getting right to the heart of the topic. And what would you guys think about that? Would you miss this part or, or, or yeah. would that be better? Or would like, it be a bonus just to get right into the core topic and yeah. spend more time there and get in there faster? So leave us uh, some comments, if you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, hey, no, keep it. We love it the way it is. Or, you know, yeah, that would really be cool. Love, love hearing from you or whatever, but yeah. we just, can we just Shorter get, is better. <laughs> yeah, can we just get into the content? Yeah. Um, and right now, if you guys have gotten value out of these pantry chats, would you just drop down and give this video a thumbs up right now as we're talking? Absolutely. Or subscribe if you haven't yet. Yeah. And uh, we're on that march to 100,000. Yeah, we're so getting, that's, that's an exciting on, on mark. On YouTube. On YouTube. On YouTube, yeah. Yeah, because Facebook, yeah. we've already yeah. Gone, yeah. blown right past yeah. 100,000 on Facebook, and right. we are... Almost, I think we have 4,000 to go on YouTube. I think, yeah, so. I think so. So yeah. appreciate so your share. So share this with somebody and, and else. Comments. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah, Sounds and uh, thanks for helping us get there. You guys are awesome. We've just got such a positive channel. Oh, we do. And positive feedback. You guys feedback. are so amazing. Yeah, and uh, we just thank you for that. It's, it's a good experience for yeah. us. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so a day in the life of homesteading family. Wow, where do we start? Where do we start? Well, we start right at the beginning. Yeah, right. Okay, first thing in the morning, <laughs> 5 a.m. Okay, so right we, we want to qualify this a little bit. Yeah. And one thing, okay. our schedule changes throughout the year somewhat, you know. Yeah. Um, we try to live seasonally to some extent. Yep. You know, in some ways you can, in some ways you can't. We all live in a modern world. But right now, we are up at 5 a.m., Josh and I are. Yeah. And... Um, Quite a few of the older kids are getting up at about 5 a.m. Yeah, they too. are. Yeah, on, yeah. Yeah, on like, their own. On their own. Yeah. They do that well, by themselves. One other before we, because we're going to lay out kind of a, we're going to talk about it by time, kind of how mm -hmm. we work through the day in a schedule. And, and so there's this appearance of structured rigidity. And it's right. there to give us structure, but it's not as rigid um, as we're just going to say as we go 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, th you have to be flexible in this life. You have to be structured mm -hmm. and you have to have goals to where we're staying productive, but um, there's just so many different things that happen in a day, and especially people-wise. Um, more than getting things done, as important as that is in right. this life and providing for ourselves, people are the most important, whether it's people in our family, mm -hmm. people that we know that need help, or somebody stopping by. And so um, that, that structure is what kind of like a budget. It's kind of a guideline. Yeah. We do our best to stick by it, but it's always shifting and moving. I think for me, I like to think of it as a tool instead of a master, you know, and this is just something to help us accomplish our goals in a day rather than something that, you know, you got to watch your clock and feel stressed about hitting those right. time markers. We just don't want to live that way and we don't want you guys to have to live no. that way. But also what we are giving you here 
is our ideal day. And how often do you think we hit an ideal day? <laughs> like well, we hit once in I, an ideal day occasionally. I mean, you know, I'd say most of the time most you're the hitting time you're hitting eighty percent. Right. You know, yeah. it's probably an average seventy five, eighty percent. And some and, days it all goes crazy right. and you're and, just hitting meals. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. And a lot of days there's a lot of fluctuation and some yeah. days just go sideways or yeah. upside down. Yeah. Sometimes. So we're giving this to you guys as just a tool so you can see what we're doing and what works for us. But we don't want this to any way become a burden to any of you. And I know, especially moms, you guys like me, you see what somebody else is doing. It's so easy to be like, oh my gosh, I'm not doing enough. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't, don't let this be that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, take it as suggestions. Take on what works for you guys and throw out everything else. And that, that's why if some of you relate to it, I like the thought of a budget because a budget is something that you line out for your household or your business and it gives you guidelines and goals at how you're going to achieve okay. something. But as you move along, you alter it, you adjust, it's, it's, it's not perfect. Right. So that, that, that helps that thinking so you don't get too rigid, yeah. but you need the structure. Yeah. Okay. Kay. So on to it. 5 a.m. <laughs> Right now, springtime, this is seasonal, but we're giving you our day right now. 5 a.m., we're up. We are we're going hopefully and, up. And, yeah, hopefully <laughs> up somewhere, 5, 5.15, uh -huh. right off the bat. It's not perfect. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, kind of quiet time, right? Yeah, our, that's our time to have quiet time, yep. to have time to get dressed, to have a prayer time. Yep. Yep. And, prayer time, um, Bible time. Bible time, and, and just have our morning. Yeah. Exercise, mm -hmm. uh, right now, I think we both feel we're getting enough exercise outside. Out we're yeah. not hitting that real hard, but uh, winter time, try, try to do we a try little something. Try to get something. our exercise in in the morning. Yeah. yeah, and that's kind of five to six-ish. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, some of the older kids now are are up as well. They, they don't really have to be. I think six is kind of the time that they're generally getting going, but a couple of the older kids are starting to get going as it's, well. It's getting light here probably by about 4.30 at this point. Yeah, it's, yeah by 5, so, it's pretty light. So, you know, by 6 o'clock, it is, it's really bright yeah. out, and so everybody's just kind of awake. Yeah. They're really getting yeah. up and going. So from the time our children were really small, we just had them get up, have um, some quiet time of their own, get dressed, make their bed, and just get right on out to their morning chores. And... You know, we've started that from very young, and that just keeps going yep. in our house. So. And so that's that's for the whole household, just kind of a quiet start. So whatever yeah. the time is, and if it shifts through the season, we have this, this small window in time where people are getting up, and older people can get up a little bit earlier so mm -hmm. that you get a little personal space and quiet time, and just get to start your day kind of nicely, meditatively, whatever, you know, right? Uh, whatever's going on. And then by about 6 to 6.30, mm -hmm. the house, kind of the rest of the house gets cranking. So I'm trying to walk yeah. out the door at 6 o'clock right now and go walk rounds in the garden to catch any early weeds or yeah. any problems yeah. that are happening, just see what's going on, and be back in the house by 6.30. Right, so there's this window from about 6 to 7.30, breakfast is at 7.30, mm -hmm. so there's about an hour and a half where I know for me I'm doing the same thing. I'm outside looking in the greenhouse, looking at the garden, looking at the property, working on projects. Uh, you're out there for a little bit, and then you're getting back in the house right. and helping things get going. What does that look like yeah. in the house? Right so now? when I'm back in the house at about 6.30, I usually will pop back in, make sure the little people are waking up, the real little ones, and um, making sure breakfast is in the oven. And this is a key for us. This is something that just changed the mornings for me personally. We do breakfast casseroles that we make ahead of time, and all we have to do is slide them in the oven. And uh, one of the older girls, that's her job first thing, is, <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> is to slide that casserole right into the oven and then it's ready to go. We just pull it out and set it on the table and it's good to go. So, so, so most of making breakfast actually fits into another part of the it, day that in, we'll get to, right? right? The, a day yeah. before, a couple days before. Okay. And we do that all week long so that we've got a breakfast ready to go, hot and uh, with very little work. Otherwise, if I have to be in there and make breakfast and cuddle with the baby who's crying, or <laughs> it's just not gonna get yeah. done on time, there's no way. So, so I so, try and do a walkthrough of the house personally and mm -hmm. just make sure I'm seeing the different areas of the house, what needs to be done in the day. During that time, the different kids are also doing their chores though. Right, yeah, yeah. So outside we've got the guys, the boys doing their chores and you've right. got things going on inside generally is how yeah. it's working. And so we're both not only doing our own thing, but checking in with them, mm -hmm. right? And making right. sure that uh, those areas are moving forward and getting done. Right, and so some of those types of chores in the house are to get breakfast in. Yeah. I put in some kitchen chores like straining our kefir every day. 
uh, starting the laundry, collecting laundry, setting the table. Different people yeah. are doing all those different things, and uh, yeah, the boys are out. Usually yeah, outside taking, take, taking care of the animals, uh, working in the garden. We've mm -hmm. actually got a lot of cleanup going on and organization outside, so we're filling time with that. So in our house, you finish your chores before you have breakfast, or you don't have breakfast. Right. <laughs> Just all, all kinda, of us. Yeah. yeah, all of us yeah. do that. And, and that actually works really well. I mean, there's usually a phase somewhere in the younger ones mm -hmm. where they have a little bit of a hard time with that, but because we're all doing it and because you just do that from your young, everybody fits into that pretty well and it, and it helps get things done and so we yeah. get a good amount done reasonable uh in the morning yeah. for breakfast absolutely most of our basic chores yeah so breakfast time breakfast for us is actually our core family meal i know a lot of folks do that at dinner yeah um we're early risers i know me i'm exhausted by the end of the day and get tired <laughs> so and we're we're together we're all together at breakfast yeah. time there, there's nobody off you know coming in late or as the kids are getting older which our kids are just about to hit that they're gonna be doing activities away from the mm -hmm. home so we hit it at breakfast where we're all together. And so it's not just breakfast and eat and go. It's a little bit more uh, family time. We do our uh, Bible time together mm -hmm. and uh, just family being together. And then also a little bit of homeschool topics, just kind of on the fly, some geography, some social studies, maybe current events. Yeah. And, and so just get a good mix of being together and talking about life and, and different areas. Uh, in the morning for breakfast, right? As opposed to dinner, which I know is what most folks do. Yeah, but that works just, for a lot of people. We just find our find it works really well in the morning, and that way we can go out in our day and whatever happens in the day when it does go mm -hmm. sideways. Yeah. Or you got a project, and I can't get in, or a couple of us can't get in for dinner till late. Uh, we've all connected, and that's really important for the family, Where, wherever it is. For us, it works well for breakfast, but. Right. For wherever it is in your family, and especially in this lifestyle where everybody's doing a lot and, mm -hmm. and working hard, it's really, really important that we all come together and and have that consistent daily, besides the bigger moments around, but that consistent daily time yeah. together. Yeah. And so that that's important. It's an important part of the day. Right. So after that point in the morning, we have what we call daily chores around the house. And that is a, a complicated charting system of all of the different jobs that we need to do around the household, generally inside the house, okay. just to keep the house running at a basic level. So that would include making bread. One person has making bread every, you know, on Thursday mornings of every week. Um, that's uh, vacuuming certain areas of the house or dusting certain areas. So it's, you're kind of covering, um, those aren't giant jobs, but no, they're, they're, they're giant. everybody doing a little bit that's mm -hmm. kind of keeping the house uh, functioning. Yeah, it's that right? kind of, if, it, if all we did for the week is just these basic things, then the house would not be falling apart right. at least. It might not be sparkling clean, but we could keep operating that way. That is also where somebody makes the, um, the breakfast casserole for the next day. Okay. Which is really, really good. because you, you, you make breakfast after breakfast. We make breakfast right after breakfast. <laughs> right. Also, other people are cleaning up the kitchen. Right. So we just kind of put our whole what we need to do to keep the house running right there in the morning and get that stuff done. Now, myself, that's the point after breakfast where I step out and go to work. Yeah. And, and I'm out. So yeah. I'm, I'm off to work at that point until mm -hmm. lunchtime. Right. And so you guys then are hitting that period mm -hmm. and then hitting school generally, right? Yeah. We do some laundry folding after that where we do some read aloud time. That's part of school. We get to read a lot of books together because I read and they fold and it works really well. Yeah. And then after that, we get into school time and can spend a solid couple hours all together working on school. So then that gets us all the way up until about lunchtime. Yeah. Yeah, so, and, and then lunch is pretty pretty lunch is pretty loose. That's kinda generally lunch. generally leftovers, right? You're right. not that's not the time of the day that anybody's working real hard to do any fancy meals. Right. There's just not time for that. We yeah. try to do leftovers, we'll do peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, yeah. whatever is yeah, pretty easy. quick, easy and grab uh, and go. And healthy and yeah, kind of grab and go. And a lot of people, especially this time of year, will opt to take their food outside and go sit and eat lunch oh, yeah. outside. So it's not a table, all sit down together meal necessarily. Right. Yeah, I have a different, so, you know, yeah, that's sometimes yeah. we're together. Sometimes there's a couple people going off here and there and yeah. 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 And uh, that, that gives a little bit of looseness and freedom of the day too after, cause that morning's packed in. It's mm -hmm. full. It really is. So that, that's also just a break time and, and everybody kind of getting their own space and, and uh, yeah. kicking back for a few. After lunchtime and a little bit of free time and play time there, um, we go to what we call nap time and nap time chores. Yep. That's because we still have so many little people in the house who are taking a nap. 
And so that's just a really quick chore time where we're cleaning up lunch dishes, doing things like um, making sure the meat for the next night's meal is defrosted. And some people are sitting with the little people who are falling asleep and taking a nap. Well, and some of the older kids are doing school that have a heavier after school chores, load, right? Yeah, the after chores, the chores, right. right after that period, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah and then, uh, then during nap time, you can either, Okay, so I'm jumping ahead. You're jumping ahead. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, during nap time, the, the kids, if they're older and they're not napping, they can either finish up their school if they were not able to finish it in the morning. And, of course, the older ones have heavier school loads, so they're oftentimes finishing right. up school yeah. in that time. And the younger ones will have free time which usually means go play outside if the weather's at all decent. Right. So. Yeah, or in yeah, inside yeah. Legos, whatever. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So that that kind of goes till what four ish. Yeah, that's about three thirty to four is mm -hmm. when we say you know little guys are awake and we have a little snack and then everybody gets a little bit of free time until about five o'clock chore time. Yeah. Evening chore time. Yeah. And then that's another period where we just you know we're taking care of animals. We're taking care of. Uh, Whatever your chore is, one person's cleaning up the kitchen, emptying the dishwasher, and others helping with dinner prep, and uh, we kind of just do the evening stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you guys are yeah taking care of the ladies yeah. are taking care of what's going on in the house generally, mm -hmm. yeah, and the guys are back out to uh, outdoor chores, animals, projects. Generally from five to six. Yeah. yeah you know. And it's not exclusively girls in the house and boys outside. Oh, right no. Now, Especially right now. Yeah. yeah right now, yeah, it, it depends it's, on... you know, during winter, it kind of falls to that because the outside chores get much more minimal. Right. But here as we get well, more we don't animals want, we don't want the girls freezing their fingertips off <laughs> and so their nice. toes. It gets pretty cold. <laughs> We're thankful for that. But, um, but as we get into summer and there's more animal chores, there's more yeah. um, garden chores then we all end up kind of... Right, well, and the milk, mil you know, we're going to be milking soon, mm -hmm. and and that's, you know, the kids will share the milking. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll milk some, you milk occasionally, but mm -hmm. generally that's the kids, and so, that you know, that gets split up a little bit. Yeah. And same with the gardens. Yeah. Yeah. So we get through the evening chores, and then we have dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So shooting for six for dinner, generally. Generally. Yeah, and that's generally a comeback <laughs> together time, most of the time. Um if we're yeah. not busy and off. And right. you know, right now this time of year, because our days are so long and it's just so nice in that evening time, it seems like we end up eating closer to 6.30 to seven a lot of times. Oh, it's just easy to stay yeah. going outside. Yeah. And, and, and that's great. By that time of the day, the core of everything that needs to get done has mm -hmm. gotten done. And so, especially this time of year where those afternoons are nice or, you know, more projects are running long right. <laughs> you know, for me right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm happy that working. dinner's later usually because I need to get done. But there's a lot of flexibility in there cause, yeah. because the core of everything that needs to happen has happened yeah. and is done. And um, so it's either a little extra project time or a little extra play time. Dinner fits in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, what, kind of clean up after that? Yeah, we all kind of get the kitchen cleaned up. Yeah, and, and then generally family, family time, and that, that just varies depending on, you know, we're coming out of the season of where we would be reading together. Yeah, we do a lot of know. reading together yeah, during the, the, the falls and the winters when it's cold out yeah, and dark. And, and then movies on some evenings or something, mm -hmm. and then now it's just, it's outside time and yeah. play time, really, yeah. you know, in the evenings, which is great. Yeah. 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 So that is kind of the core layout of our day. I guess the kids are usually, the younger kids are in bed by about 8 o'clock. Yep. Once you hit 13 in our house, you get to stay up until 9. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and Josh and I are trying to be to bed by well, 9, 9, 30, 9 to 10. 9, 9, 30. And I, and I think that's important to note that um, it, it is easy to be go, get going so much in, in this life. Really, any modern life really pushes us to go, to go, go. Mm -hmm. You got to rest. So whether you're, you know, early up and early to bed or whether you're late up and late to bed, you need that window of rest, good solid rest. We, we need it physically yeah, right. and mentally just to do everything that we're doing. So mm -hmm. really shooting for, you know, kind of target eight hours. That doesn't happen yeah. all that much, but seven to eight hours of rest. That's really important. Right. Yeah. 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 Now, one other thing that we do throughout the day in terms of chores, a type of chore is what we call jurisdictions, where everybody has an area of the house or the immediate around the house, like the porch, the yard, um, that they are responsible for doing a quick tidy on. Yeah. This is this is golden because if you just 
have those moments where you look around and you're like, oh my goodness, it's a mess. I can't handle this. It's getting stressful. Being able to call a quick jurisdiction yeah. clean and, you know, within five minutes, all of a sudden the whole place is looking good. Every, everybody knows what to do and they can yeah. just go pick up and that, that really, especially when things are getting loose and, yeah. and, you know, and as they often are, and you don't just have time to do a deep clean or you've got company coming and you're going, wow, you know, dinner's not, whatever, you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody knows what to go and do and, and um, it just kind of gets done. Yeah. That's, that's a big help. That is yeah. really helpful. It's helpful to my sanity. I know yeah. that. <laughs> so that's, I mean, that is, I mean, that's a really simplified short tour. Yeah. Yeah, and so we realize that probably invokes a lot of questions as mm -hmm. well, but that's, the, I mean, that's just really condensing it down to give you an idea of the flow. Yeah. Because um, we could probably sit here for several hours talking about all the nuances mm -hmm. of uh, how that goes. So feel free to, to ask more detailed questions. Maybe we'll do another one of these in the near future and dive in a little bit more specifically yeah. to an area if, if there's something that we need to expound on sure. or, or is helpful. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I wanted to say that I do keep... Um, lists of all of these things in the house for me to refer back to because oh. we all have those days where it's like we've gotten so far off I don't even know what we're supposed to be doing right now or... well she's like the sports coach really <laughs> you know and, yeah. and, and she's got the um, clipboard the big clipboard <laughs> you know with the list of jurisdictions and who's doing this and again it's a guideline yeah. you know it's like like that timing throughout the day it's a guideline but mm -hmm. I know when you go somewhere yeah. it's helpful for me because you can just step in and read and go oh, okay here's here's what's going what we're supposed to be doing. And so there's again that balance of listing things out yeah. and so you know where everything is and what to do and you can reference what's going on or what should be going on for somebody. Yeah. Um, but you're not holding yourself to that perfect rigidity of, of your failing if you're not doing it exactly right because right. that becomes burdensome, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. definitely does. Yeah. It definitely does. So you don't want to add more burden. You want to have your organizational tools actually making your life easier and better and everybody know what to expect. But at the beginning of getting a family onto any sort of new program, it takes extra work and extra training, Yeah, you know? So the beginning of it's always a little hard, but well, it and, and, should be bringing you rest. And <laughs> having loose expectations if you're trying to ease into uh, establishing a routine like this so yeah. that you can do more and you can fit in you know, gardening or animals or preserving or herbs with, you know, the rest of life. Right. You just, again, where we've said in the past, you got to break into it. You don't, don't dive in too deep, too fast. Yeah. And that's like that rigidity and schedule. It just, it, it's, it can be oppressive. Yeah. And you got to have balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's about it on time today. And I'm realizing we didn't really discuss what we're going to talk about next week. So what so, are we going to talk about so next week? <laughs> here we, here's a question for you. What are we going to talk about next week? Well, um, there's a lot of gardening going on. I'm definitely getting uh, questions, which I will try to address in, in some other videos in the weekly mm -hmm. garden video. But um, give us some topics and we'll, we'll leave it open since we don't have it planned. And, um, Try to respond to those questions. Okay. All right, you guys. Good Great hanging, hanging out with, with you. you. <laughs> <laughs> We've been married too long. <laughs> <laughs> what was that about a marriage seminar? Somebody said. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, I was teaching one. That's all right. <ughs> okay. Have see, a great week. <laughs> see you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.